Hi everyone, this is Derek with Studio MMA and MMA Nut, and I have with me grappling legend Damian Maya, who I've met a couple of times, and all I ever want to do is talk jiu-jitsu with you, because I think I'm going to get some golden nugget from you, but <laughs> instead of that today, um, you're fighting Chris Weidman, who, as a fan, speaking as a fan, to me it's kind of a lose-lose, because if you win, you beat a guy who's good, but no one heard of, and if you lose, oh, Damian Maya's no good. How does that make you feel? Like, do you think that way, or? Uh, some people, yeah, some uh, of some people said that to me also. But you know, as a fighter, I need to take away these thoughts on my mind. I need to think about him like as a, you know, it's just a big challenge as Mike. You know, uh, doesn't matter what people will think about. They, they, you know, if people try to understand the game, they will know that he's very mm -hmm. tough and he's very good. So. For the real fans, they, they know that this fight, there's no difference with Mike's fight or this fight, you know. It's just about Mike, he's more experienced and he has more time in the road, you know, and that's it. But, you know, Chris is, is, is the same level. It's kind of all black belts are just white belts who didn't give up. And if you, when you fight Chris, people look at him like no one knows him. Well, not a lot of people. John Jones originally was no one knows him and he turned in. So if you beat him, and he goes on to tear apart the world. You beat the guy, you know. Luis Alvarez beat uh, Jose, no, uh, Jose Aldo. Yeah. He's the only guy. So you do this, do you look at it like, I'm going to beat a guy before yeah. he becomes great? Yeah, of course. You know, it's, there is like, you know, many, the sport, you know, is so unpredictable that, you know, these things happen. Remember when I fought Anderson, was like, mm -hmm. I was supposed to fight Anderson, then I lost to Nate, my first loss. And then I won the Miller by points, and then everybody, ah, oh, Damien, we need to do more like a couple of fights to come back to fight. And then they call me one week after and say, okay, you, you want to fight Anderson in eight weeks? Mm -hmm. So you never know what's going to happen, you know? You never know if if I, I beat Chris, and then people say, ah, Chris was okay guy, and then he starts to beat everybody, you know? The same with Cheo. You know, when I beat Cheo, many people mm -hmm. said, ah, but, you know, He's, he's no good with jiu-jitsu guy, he's not that good. I said, no, this guy is very good. He's tall, strong, good wrestler. If you don't have good guard to fight him, he's tough, you know? And everybody was saying, no, 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 because I beat him. And then after, he started to win, 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 and fight Anderson, I almost won the fight. So, you know, sport, we know we are inside the sport, we know how tough the people are. Now, speaking of your win over Chael, did you look at the Paulo Filio? The way he beat Chael, was that something you, like, tape you watched and, ah, he's triangle choke, arm bars and triangles. Is that something you as a jiu-jitsu fighter look at at wrestlers? Yeah, of course I watched it in that time, but the thing was, what happens with me and Chael was different, you know, because I didn't submit him for the bottom, but I took him yeah. down and then, you know, the triangle appears. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just, you know, you look at but... They are tough defending also, you know, Cheo, I'm sure he's training Jiu-Jitsu, you know, BJJ, and you can see from his last fight, say, no, I don't train BJJ, I don't like it, it's for, you know, CC, blah, 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 but, you know, and then he goes with Brian Stan, take his back, you know, and try to submit, you know, and then he submit the fight, so, of course, you know, he, he's been training Jiu-Jitsu, and the same with Chris Weidman, you know, every wrestler, so they are not, you know, they are smart on the ground. Now, going forward... When you get that call from the UFC, they look, your guy's out, this guy's in, there's a certain mentality that goes into fighting. You know what you're going to do, you know what you have to do, and you kind of laser focus in on that. When they change your partner, does that do anything to you mentally, or do you just, different face, I'm not paying attention, it's a fight? No, yeah, this, the first reaction is was I'm happy because I will fight, you know. Before I was like, oh, I'm not going to fight anymore. Then I was happy because I was going to fight. But after that, for a couple of days, we start to think, but it's totally different, and it, it messed a little bit with your mind. But after a while, you know, you just get back, uh, and you might see, you know, you, you get back, and, and you, like you said, you know, it's just a fight, and it's different, but in the end of the day, it's just uh, another fighter, as tough as Mike, and let's go. Now, you look at when you fought Chael and you were going to fight Michael. Those are two guys who bring pressure, nonstop pressure. Non How do you train for something like that? Do you just work on escaping to the side? Do you work on parry? Like, how do you train for someone who brings nonstop pressure? 
I think, you know... And I should add, you've also trained, sparred with Vanderlei Silva. Pressure. Yeah, Hands yeah, up. yeah. I think, you know, you need to be... Put pressure also. You cannot just defend yourself. You need to give pressure back. Because if you're just defending, they will keep going. You know, keep putting pressure. So when they put pressure, you put pressure back. Of course, not a, like in Jiu-Jitsu, we say we use their pressure, but keep putting pressure. Not against them, but, you know, we try to go away and put pressure. Now, when you are... When you're contacted by the UFC and they say you're not going to fight, oh, you got eight weeks. What goes through your head as a fighter? Like, okay, I weigh this much, I got it this long time, get ready. How does that work for you? Like when they called you about the Anderson fight and they just, we need you in eight weeks. How, what do you do right away? First of all, I, I was very excited because, you know, how many fighters in the world wants to have your chance for, to fight for the title, mm -hmm. especially with the best fighter in the world? So I was pretty excited. I knew that maybe that was a, I need a little bit more experience but at the same time you cannot throw away an opportunity like that you know because you don't know if you're gonna have again so I you know I took this fight and you know and I went there and fought uh, of course if I could do today I would do different I, because I, you know I, def, I I'm a totally different fighter at that time but I couldn't you know give up that, that opportunity now, one thing I notice about you a lot from now, your first fight to where you're fighting now, you're letting your hands go and you're trusting yourself. How do you build that courage? How do you build that trust? I think because, you know, my, my boxing coach in Brazil, they work a lot with like my step movements and that's make you feel safer, you know. If you just plant on the ground <coughs> and brawl with the guy, it's very dangerous. But if you start to learn how to move, then you can trust a little bit more. And since I do have them, and I said I wouldn't ask jujitsu, I have to ask one. <coughs> Recently, I was teaching my nephew uh, jujitsu. Uh, how do you feel about like a, you have a daughter? Would you let her at five years old go box, go kickbox, or jujitsu, and why? She will go with two years old to the jujitsu academy <laughs> <coughs> because you know sports great. Martial art for me is even greater because it's a sport with martial art, with some philosophy and a lot of things involved. Them. I want her to have the opportunity to have the same. I don't care if she will be competing in Jiu Jitsu or not, if she wants, she can do it or not, but I want her to train and be a black belt. Do you feel that <coughs> to be a competitor in Jiu Jitsu? to be a black belt, to be whatever, you have to compete? Or is it okay to just go to your school, earn your belts, never compete? How do you feel about that? My former teacher, Fabio Gurgel, he would say one thing very interesting, and I, I think the same. I think he said, you know, once you get the black belt, if you want to compete or not, it's up to you. You know, you can be just a teacher. But until the black belt, you must pass every experience. I think you must compete, you know, in every belt, you must uh, maybe do a one MMA fight, you know, and have all, all kind of ex experience. Because if you want to be a coach one day as a black belt, you need to know what happens when you go into compete. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so till the brown belt, I think you got to compete, you know, and get this experience. And then w once you get black, you choose if you want to be professional, compete in black, or sometimes or not compete, just be a coach. But, you know, you already got this experience of competition. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Damon. Thank you very much, as always, man. Thank you.